how you've talked so much about executing late and close games. How do you feel like your guys did today in that situation? Well, let me let me hit on a couple of things. First of all, um, I did a really bad job in this pick and roll stuff for Severe and made them look bad. Um, we got to be better prepared for what we're doing. You try to talk them through. You got to drill it. This is what we're doing. Um, the second thing that I loved, a couple guys did not play well. That's okay. You're not machines. You're not robots. Other guys stepped in and played well. How about Jacob and how he played? Uh, how about Lance? When Lance went in when we needed him and went in and we ran an offense through him, unbelievable. And then what happened with Ty Ty, we, we were going to him. He turned it over twice. I took him out and just said, hey, kid, in a big game, is this who you are? You can't make a play. You turn it over. You got to prove in this game you can make baskets. And I stuck him back in and went at him, and he made two big hoops. So he kind of bowed his neck, and I was happy with that. But it was, you know, when you shoot, what did we shoot for the game? 38%? And win? I love those games. Just absolutely love them. John Clay? Yeah, John, you, you kind of answered my question right there. Would you rather shoot 67% and win by 30 at home or shoot 36% and win a tough game uh, on the road? Oh, is it 36%? That's even better. Oh, <laughs> that means you know you had to fight and you had to guard, you had to rebound, or you had no chance of winning. And um, But they they were good. I mean, I understand they missed some shots that they normally make, um, but, you know, we had 17 turnovers, 17. Tur that's not who we are. And again, we missed, we were one for 11 at halftime from the three. And I walked in and said, guys, we're down five points. Like with how we just played, let's just play, just battle. And we did some good stuff. We finally made a couple shots that get created a gap. Um, you know, Oscar rebounded some balls that he needed to, but you know, you were right when you talked to Davion because he was a difference maker in this game. Daryl Bird. Yes, sir. Thank you, Cal. I'm not sure if it's this year, but I know in previous years you've talked about teams letting go of the rope late. Why didn't that happen tonight, especially in, in that environment you guys were facing? Well, we've been talking a lot about the last four minutes of games, and we've been working on how we finish. But this game was different. So some of the stuff we wanted to do to finish, we could not do because of how they play. And it ended up being an ISO game. And now guys got to make plays. That's, and we have good players who can and, and did. Kyle Tucker. How much you've talked about Jacob's maturity and some of the things with him that he had to get better at, but how much as he just keeps kind of coming up with these energy plays, these uh, critical moment plays for you as he turning your head as this season goes along? Well, I, I'm just telling you that, uh, you know, the biggest thing is he can guard five positions. And when he learns to hit first, then it doesn't, your, your physique doesn't matter if you hit first. If they hit first, your physique matters. When he learns to hit first, whether it be rebounding defensively, whether it's offensively, being in a position before the guy's ready to play you. Let me tell you a big play in the game because it happened earlier. There was a back cut on one of our guys and they scored a basket and it ended up like it could have been a huge play. How about Oscar? They tried to make the same play on Oscar and he tipped it out of bounds. I mean, that was a big play. Those are all huge plays in a game like this. John Hale. Cal, because you guys play so many of the best teams in the league on the road this year, how important was it for your guys to prove they could win in an environment like that tonight? Well, you, every game, I, I, I joked after, I don't know if you guys know, I've invested in different T-shirt companies. Um, you know, the white out, the blue out, the orange out, the black out, and I'm getting a piece of all that action. So I'm happy that they come in and they put all that stuff. I'm, I'm just teasing. But you know um, that I try to tell them you take pride in this and know they're coming to see you. They want to see you. 
Now, they may want to see you lose, but they want to watch you and take pride in that. My other thing, as you know, is I want to be roundly booed. Like, I want them to, guys, to almost have aneurysm screaming so loud, boo. Um, then I, okay, I must be doing my job. And I tell them, you, you almost want that stuff. John Clay. John, you said this turned into an ISO game, an isolation game. Have you had games like that before this year? And if so, did you do better tonight than you had done previously in those types of games? I don't know, John. I mean, I, I just know we have guys that can do that and play that way, Ty Ty being one. Um, I just, like I said, I got to do a better job. If they're going to bum rush our pick and rolls, here's what we're doing. Here's how we're playing. And um, we just weren't prepared for it. And that's on me. And that put us in a hole right away because you and I know that's how we've been playing. And even if they come and trap, we had some things we were doing. This was more of a bum rush. This was literally and hands on you and clothes and bodies. And there's supposed to be a, a, a circle around you. The circle was about that big like that. So, um, you know, and, and, and again, I, I got to do a better job with that for these kids so that they're not confused because when you're confused, you cannot be aggressive. And I want us flying, being aggressive, you know, doing those things. Jeff Drummond. Yeah, Cal, you've preached so many times to ignore the shooting column and those stats and to find other ways to help the team win. Is, is Davion a good example of that tonight? He has eight rebounds and I think Big four, rebounds. Of, four Big of them were in the last four minutes. Yeah. Big rebounds. And that's why I put him back in the game. I put him back in because I knew he'd do that. And But that three in the corner out of the timeout, that was big. That kind of put everything on their heels like, okay. And I think it had our guys convinced, oh, man, we can win this. So, yeah, I'm, I'm proud of him and how he's playing and what he's doing. He's doing all the little things. And you're right, eight rebounds, almost had a double-double. No turnovers. Oh, I'm sorry, two turnovers. That's all right. It's not eight. Someone else had eight. Did someone have eight turnovers in this game? Over here. All right, last two. Jerry Tipton, go ahead. Yeah, John, you mentioned uh, Jacob can guard multiple positions. I'm wondering, is it merely whoever the hot hand is on the other team? What goes into the what guy you put him on? Well, we put him on point guards in the past if that was bothering us because he could switch and guard the point. Um, or we could switch and uh, he could guard the five if that was the one that we thought would hurt us. Um, but he can twirl and, and switch different things and still guard a guard. He can guard a big, you know, he's long enough to go rebound. Um, he's playing better offensively, missed, you know, missed a dunk, missed a lay. But again, if you go, you're an eighth grade, you're thinking as an eighth grade basketball, like who had the most points? You're all asking me about Jacob and think of the baskets he missed. It didn't matter. It didn't matter. Um, he fought, and that's, again, the difference you make when you're not scoring. Well, it doesn't matter. I want mine to – I want him to get 20 points. It's eighth grade, man. This is this is a dog fight. There's going to be a game where a guy gets 20. We got six guys in the last five games averaging double figures. Now, that will go down this game because we, had, we didn't score as many points as we've been scoring. But – and, again, you got to give A&M credit for how they played us. They came in with the game plan. And it affected us. Last question, Kyle Tucker. Kyle, when you talk about Davion, uh, how how difficult is it to do what he's done this year? He, he's kind of the focal point for you last year. A lot of the time this year, he has to take maybe a step back. He's not in the starting lineup. Then he gets sick and, and has to kind of fight through that. I would think just mentally for him to get through all of that, deal with it, be a good teammate, and and play the way he's playing is is a, a challenge. Again, I, I'm telling you, whether you start or not, I mean, in at Kentucky, you got guys, Darius Miller lasted how long in this NBA? He didn't start. Started the game that Michael Kidd said, let him start in my place. That helped us win a national title, by the way. What about 
Who else? Devin Booker. <laughs> it doesn't matter here. If you're into eighth grade stuff, that all matters. You're at Kentucky. Every game we play is like this. Let me tell you the, the, the advantage we have with this. Because every game is a Super Bowl, we're used to Super Bowl games. You just, you know, and it's, like I said, hat night, cup night, family night. It's something, and, and it's packed. So, but it's a, you know, again, you know, we, we fought through a game at LSU without guards, and that gave ourselves a chance. That's what we're looking for, and you're right. How we play down the stretch, what we're trying to do, we got to get better. Uh, I got to watch this tape and really try to figure out where where the heck did I screw this up, and um, as we move on. Coach, thanks for your time. We appreciate hey, it.